everyone and welcome to our daily manna. Shall we all pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, we honor and we worship you every day of our lives. Today, Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for we can um, read your word freely. We can meditate upon it. And dear God, I ask that you will remove any distraction that will hinder us from understanding your word. I pray, Father, that the meditation of our hearts be pleasing unto you and that we will be able to intentionally apply it in our lives to please you always, to honor and glorify you. Thank you for your grace and your loving kindness. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Kids are happy when they receive something like lollipops, toys, chocolates, and they're also happy when they are comfortable. But when they experience discomfort, they grumble, they complain, or even whine. So it's true with adults. Seldom you will find adults who are joyful in difficult situations. It only shows that as humans, it is not natural for us to rejoice at all times. However, Paul has that specific command to the believers in Thessalonica. Now let us look at Paul's commands found in verses 12 to 22 to the Thessalonian believers when it comes to living a life pleasing to God despite the persecutions they are experiencing. In the coming weeks, we will be meditating on the command of Paul in 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 to 22. But today, we will focus on 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. But I will be reading verses 16 to 18. Let me read to you 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. The word of the Lord says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. May the good Lord bless the reading of His word. Now, this letter was intended to encourage the new believers to grow in their Christian faith and to settle some questions they had primarily about the second coming of Christ. Now, take note that the believers this time were experiencing great affliction. That's found in chapter 1, verse 6. But they are courageously facing it. The first command is to rejoice always. Now, the believers are already joyful. Yet Paul encouraged them to continually rejoice always. People are naturally joyful when circumstances are positive or things are well, but it is difficult to be joyful when the circumstance or our situation is seemingly against what we want, just like what the Thessalonian believers are experiencing this time. But the Christian's joy is not dependent on circumstances. The textual context of this command, what Paul had in mind when he wrote this, is to delight in God's favor and being conscious of His grace at all times. A believer's joy must be rooted in God's grace. God's grace is undeserved favor. You can't work to earn it or deserve it. We were saved because of His grace. God's grace is God's quality. It is in His mind, in His heart, and in His nature. So believers are to rejoice always from the perspective of God's grace. No wonder God's response to Paul when the apostle asked God to remove his thorn in the flesh. What's his response? My grace is sufficient for you. I don't think God or Paul wants to see believers continuously laughing even in a difficult situation. Jesus wept when Lazarus died. He was even very sorrowful to the point of death when he was in the garden of Gethsemane. Rejoicing here is not superficial joy, but the joy that is deeply anchored in God's grace. So if we are experiencing favorable situations, beautiful things in life, Rejoice, because this is God's grace, God's favor. But if we are in a difficult situation, you may mourn, you may grieve, but still rejoice because His grace is sufficient to get you through. Which means His favor, His presence is present always with you, and that's grace. 
sometimes we do not see God's favor much more in a difficult situation because we are so much focused on our predicament. But focus on God's grace, which may come in different phases. His abiding presence, His favor, your friends, your family, your company, and even your predicament can be a form of God's grace in you. Do you have a son or a daughter who is disobedient or who does not walk in the counsel of God's word? Rejoice, my friend, because God's word will carry you through. He'll give you wisdom. Are you in a relational problem or are you having problems with your spouse or loved ones? Rejoice because God's grace, His undeserved favor is with you. Or are you facing financial problems or being challenged by your health? Rejoice because God's grace is with you. As what I have said, God's grace may be in many, many forms. We just have to look for it and then we have the reason to rejoice. And the ultimate grace we received is the Lord Jesus Christ. Rejoicing or being joyful at all times makes a person or a Christian different from unbelievers. So let us rejoice always. Let's look at our situation from the lens of God's grace. Then you will be able to rejoice always. Now take note that in verse 18, we see a purpose statement for these three commands. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So tell yourself, hey, it's God's will for me to rejoice in any circumstance. So I must be intentional in recognizing God's grace for me in every situation. I must willfully rejoice always. After listening to this short meditation, let us ponder on these questions. What are the manifestations of God's grace in my life? And how will I intentionally rejoice always? So may these words ring in our hearts and minds always so that we will be able to rejoice always from the lens of God's grace. Have a blessed and joyful day ahead, everyone.